Hello and welcome to Sport Africa, a new sports show from the BBC. And this week, our big question is, why aren't black Africans swimming to success? The next Usain Bolt, South Africa's Akani Simbine is sprinting to the top. A Paralympic champion and a Nollywood actress, Lorita Onye knows how to put herself into shots. Whosoever that thinks that I can't do it, I have to encourage myself and buckle myself that I can do it. This Kenyan superstar relieves his beat to make marathon history. And who will win this week's BBC Amateur Expert Sports Quiz? Welcome to Sport Africa, the show that brings you the biggest names from the biggest games. I'm Janine Anthony in Lagos. Did you know that no black African has ever won a swimming medal at the Olympics? Now that's despite the continent having won an impressive 28 medals in the pool. Even black swimmers from other countries have won Olympic medals before. So our big question is, why aren't black Africans swimming to success? Isaac Fanning has been diving into the issue. If I'm put into that pool right now, I would drink water. I'm most likely drown. First day I was supposed to learn, I was six. I fell into the deep side of the pool. So I spent the day being calmed down while everybody else was learning. And I've watched a lot of movies. People die in water all the time, so yeah. But is it just fear that's holding black Africans back from success in the pool? I can totally relate to those guys. I can't swim to save my life. And I've got a load of black mates if you paid a million bucks to get into that pool, they would go nowhere near it. Now this is kind of embarrassing for me to admit, but I've always bought into the theory that genetically, black people are made to run rather than swim. But that's not necessarily true. The idea that you're gonna sink because of the color of your skin seems, seems ridiculous. So genetically, in your opinion, there is nothing that stops a black person from being a good swimmer. I'm unaware of any evidence for that. We're finding genes that can identify whether someone's better at endurance uh, compared to sprint, but we're not identifying a gene that's saying this person's going to be a great swimmer because there's such a, a big skill element of, of, of swimming. So, Professor Brinkley's put that to bed. But this is as far as you're going to get me in this pool. But there are some black Africans trying to bust this myth once and for all. This is Abayaku Jackson, and in 2016, he became the first man to represent Ghana in an Olympic swimming pool. Being the first swimmer to represent Ghana at the Olympics was the most amazing feeling of my life. For him, a negative mentality is holding Africans back. They think they, because they're African, they lack some certain technologies and other stuff, but I don't think so. I don't think, I just think it's their mindset. They, they feel they're African, so we, we, we shouldn't be doing as well as the Europeans. Abeyaku is young, 18, and he's mixing it with some of the best swimmers in the world. I've been to several championships. So yeah, that gave me the motivation. And I don't look down on myself. I look at myself, I'm like, whatever they can do, you can do. You, or you can do more. But for all of Abeyaku's confidence, there are still issues. He trains six times a week at a public pool his dad has to pay to use. Now this is a luxury most Africans don't have. Swimming's a much more expensive sport to get into than, say, football, which helps explain why most Africans don't make it professionally. Over in Tunisia, Osama Malouli is Africa's only non-white Olympic champion. He thinks Africa's governments need to back the sport more. The sport of swimming needs swimming pools, it needs uh, professional coaches, and uh, it needs encouragement from the media. So uh, all those three components, I think, need to be in place for the African continent to uh, develop the sport of swimming. Now, you may well be asking, why are we showing you a picture of a car park when we're talking about swimming? Well, this was the pool at Ghana's National Sports Stadium, 
but it got sealed over around 10 years ago. So you can park your car here, but I definitely would not bring your swimming costume. Well, in Ghana, we don't really have much facilities. We have the pool, yes, but we don't have the facilities to use to train the person in the pool. But then, when we're in Ghana here, for us swimmers, we don't focus on what we don't have. We focus on what we have and make the best out of what we have. <laughs> now, check this. Africa's most successful Olympian is not a runner, but a swimmer. So these are my medals. Meet Zimbabwe's Kirsty Coventry, the winner of seven Olympic medals. She thinks that slowly but surely, success for Africa in the pool is not too far away. Yeah, they're doing a great job, Bas. We've got a really strong programs right now going in Ivory Coast and Senegal, and so you just never really know. And for Africa and for where we are right now, I think we will hopefully have some positive uh, vibes coming through in the next few years. Despite all the obstacles, Abeku Jackson hopes he's one of the new generation providing Africa with those positive vibes. 2024, that's my target. I want to win an Olympic gold medal. That's my biggest dream. Now, lots of you may comment on our BBC Africa Facebook page about this story. Masalela said, Africans and swimming don't go hand in hand, unlike running or any other sports. In Africa, water is scarce and sacred. It is to be respected and not to be played in. Crocodiles and sharks leave in the water. Saul, though, had a different opinion, saying, I grew up swimming, but I never made a career because there were no facilities. I swim in the river, not swimming pools. Zimbabwean Kanye simply said, my people and swimming don't gel. We're doing just fine with marathons. We are land cruisers. And let's end on a positive note with Nandam saying, I think that if we scout for younger and variable swimmers and then focus, train and sponsor them as we do in football, Africa will go all the way. And don't forget, you can contact us too on Facebook and on Twitter. Now time for the quiz that puts you all at home watching to the test. It's armchair expert and over to our referee, Lin Wachira, in Nairobi. Welcome to Armchair Expert. The player with the most points at the end of three rounds will be crowned the week's Armchair Expert and goes into our leaderboard. And it's time to meet our contestants. Hi, my name is Marcy Haukani and I am a massive, massive Arsenal supporter. So, stay, stay, stay. I didn't get to do the convoy dance because my shorts were almost falling off. They were drenched. I'm here, I'm in it to win it. Before we go into that first round, let's have a look at the rules. Round one, it's simple. 30 seconds each to answer as many questions as possible. All attention is on the road to Kiev and Lyon for the Champions League and Europa League finals, while Wembley will be hosting the Women's FA Cup final showdown. So, all the questions in round one and two are based around that. And Masi, you're ready yes. to go. I think I'll give this guy a run for its money. Okay, and your 30 seconds start now. How many clubs has Latan Ibrahimovic played for in the Champions League? Four. Wrong, seven. Who did Real Madrid knock out of the semi-finals of the Champions League last year? Juventus. Wrong, Atletico Madrid. Name one of the three teams who were unbeaten in this year's Europa League group stage. Oh, uh, Marcel. Wrong, Zenit, St. Petersburg, Atlanta, Red Bull, Salzburg. Who are the current women's FA Cup champions? Um, Manchester City. Correct. Which and time is up. Masi right there, of course, are getting one point. And let's see if Andrew can catch up. Are you ready, Andrew? I'm you ready. Do you think you can score more than one point in this round? I'm, I'm going to do so, definitely. Your 30 seconds start now. Who did Juventus knock out of the semi-finals of the Champions League last year? Barcelona. Wrong. Monaco. What year did Wembley host its first Women's FA Cup final? 1999. Wrong. 2015. Who did Arsenal knock out of the last 16 of the Europa League? Uh, Dortmund. Wrong. AC Milan. How many clubs did a Clarence Seedorf play for in the Champions League? Five. Wrong. Four. And your time is up. Massive, massive. 
one point and Andrew of Barcelona with a zero point. So it's a close competition because one point and zero point. But that is the end of round one. Round two and three come in right after the break. We do spoil you, don't we? If you dream big, train hard, put in the hours, can you make a difference despite all of the challenges in front of you? Yes, of course you can, especially if you're Nigeria's inspirational Loretta Ongi. I come to gym to build my strength. It's very important for me because it will help me to have speed and much strength to push out the sharp boots. I will wake up early in the morning, 5.30. Then from there, I do train by 7 a.m. Squatting, leg pounding, waist program to enable me to twist, to throw. I was 12 years old when I realized my condition, that I will not be tall like other my siblings. I never dreamed to be a sports lady. When I was a kid, I do dream that I would be a super actress. So it was in 2011 that I made the team and I went to Mapt and win silver medal for Nigeria. That's where I started winning. They were surprised that I ruled all the events. I just beat them down. That's how I made the team. I have to clean the shorts. If the grass is wet, then I need to dry it up, spit on my palm so that it will have grip, then place it at my shoulder. Then I come down and push it too. That's why I do workouts to gather strength to build the shoulder so that I can be able to push it out. Believing in myself is what inspires me, what gives me morale. I think I've reached the peak by going being an Olympian. That inspires me most. Being an Hollywood actress is what I've been dreaming of. How I achieved it was, I was in the village and a lady came to me and asked me if I would join the film. I was so excited, happy to say yes. When I retire for sports, I would like to go back to where my dream starts, which is to act. In the future, I would also like to look forward to do better. Whatever challenges or whatever whosoever that thinks that I can't do it, I have to encourage myself and buckle myself that I can do it. Yes. Wow, what a character. We ask some of you what you make of Lorita. I like what she does. She's inspiring from nobody to somebody. As in, she's everything. I just like what she does, that for a lady to do something like that. Wow, she's amazing. I like everything about her, so I wish to be like her. Then I'll advise other ladies to also try and be like her. Me, myself, I'm very inspired, so I feel I should continually train to make impressive moves like her. If a renter can make it to be a world champion, the same thing is applicable to every one of us. If we can put more effort to the training, we can also be a world champion. I like the fact that she inspires people, especially me, she inspires me. I like the fact that she did not allow people to intimidate her because of her stature. I love her very well and she, she made herself global. She's so good, I like her physique. And I like the fact that she has muscle. Oh my God, it's so inspiring. I love everything about her and I wish to be like her one day. Thank you. Watching her video for the first time, seeing her inspires me. She, for her coming to train, yes. That means she started from nobody, but all of a sudden she went international. And wow, for a lady to do such thing, it's amazing. I just love her, she inspires me. Thank you. That's the end of part one. Back soon when Kenyan athlete Eloy Kipchoge relieves his top button moments. This 
and Sports Africa from the BBC. Welcome back to the BBC Sports Africa. We're left it with Messi and Andrew battling it out for the throne. It's time for round two of Armchair Experts, and here's Lynn in Nairobi. Welcome to round two. First, a recap of how the scores stand as we start the round. Messi on one point and Andrew with a zero point. The segment here is called Convince Me, and here is how it works. Round two, convince me. You each have 15 seconds to argue for or against. Two points are up for grabs. Marcy, you are against and you are for. And here is the topic. Women's teams should be able to compete in the men's league. Marcy, you go first. Convince me. Um, I think they shouldn't be able to compete in the men's league. First of all, the fa training facilities. And then the athletic, uh, athletic build-up of women is very different from the men. And then the intensity of the game on the men's side and the female side is just different. And then I, I think they shouldn't. Your 15 seconds are over. Do you think you can top that by arguing in favor of the motion? Yes. Your 15 seconds start now. Um, of late, um, we've seen uh, lady referees, lady linesmen, so we are seeing the advent of uh, women coming into uh, the men's sport. Um, in the relays, uh, athletics, we've also seen a combination uh, of late, so I think uh, it's a high time. We'll have that. Time is up, quite close, everyone trying to argue out their point really well. But I think the player who has really convinced me here is Marcy, by the yeah, yeah, of sports yeah. facilities yeah. and everything, so she gets two points. So far, running a marathon in under two hours is a dream. If anyone could shave off just three minutes off the current record, one of sports' mythical barriers would crumble down. Last year, in a carefully selected venue and with near-perfect conditions, superstar athlete Eloy Kipchoge came closer than anyone else to break into, as the project was known. Here, the Kenyan relieves his sporting moments. Breaking two was really tough. It was more than tough. It was uh, purely concentrating on pushing beyond my own limits and thinking beyond my thoughts. I was running against the unthinkable, whereby human beings don't think that a uh, human being can run two hours or hundred hours. So it was a different thing in totality. I did not change my training, but I changed my mentality. 
that morning when I went to the start line, in my mind many things were running. I was just thinking of how I'm, I'm going to tackle from the first kilometer to the last kilometer. There was a car in front which was actually uh, reflecting uh, the splits. When I looked at the clock and everything was still on a range time, my mind was really happy. I really avoided uh, thinking of dropping out because uh, the world was really looking at me and I didn't want to let down the whole world. It was really my happiness to see my teammates actually pacing for me, to see my teammates actually on the course, uh, giving me more energy to push beyond those limits. So it was really the happiest moment I've ever seen in Atamarado. After crossing the finishing line, I was really happy to see that I have managed to run two hours. Although my target at the time was to run 159 or low, but all in all, I was not disappointed by the way. I was really happy to actually cross the, the finishing line in two hours 25. But all in all, when I crossed the line, uh, I realized that uh, this project is really successful. I pushed it beyond the human thinking. It was a hard thing ever. Now the wall is 25 seconds away, and that's my spotting moment. Just 25 seconds out. Will anyone ever break two hours? Sprinter Akani Simbine is being touted as the heir to Usain Bolt, and that's a very big claim there. When it comes to speed, the South African Commonwealth Games champion comes close. But how about when it comes to character and a bit of that swag? This is Who Am I? My favorite distance on the track is 100 meters. It is a very intense race. It's very short, no space for mistake. Off the track are my parents, and on the track it's Usain Bolt. Football team is Chelsea. Kaiser Chiefs. For me, it would have to be both. Academics gives you kind of a baseline to work on and something to fall back on where athletics is also pretty fun, you know, I love doing it, it's my passion. When I ran the Olympic final in 2016, that was a goal that I wanted to achieve when I started running. Win the Olympic gold medal in the 100 meters and break the 100 meter world record. Starting strong and making sure you finish strong. My favorite tattoo is my tattoo on my forearm. This is my first tattoo. It's a hope and faith tattoo. Instagram. I always smile. Everybody says I have a good looking smile, so. <laughs> They're on the edge of their seat. You're on the edge of your seat. Even I'm on the edge of my seat. What can it be? It's the final round of Armchair Expert Back to Lynn. Round three, the quick fire decider. 45 seconds to push up your score. Remember, shout your name before you answer or you lose out. 45 seconds of this segment start now. Who won the 2018 NFL Super Bowl? Andrew. San Francisco. Uh, pass. Philadelphia Eagles. Which year did the Africa Cup of Nations begin? Uh, Andrew. 1978. Um, 19, what? 1960. Oh. 1957. Where did the first Grand Prix of the year take place? Pass. Andrew. Abu Dhabi. Melbourne, Australia. In which African country holds the IWF Diamond League? Uh, Kenya. Andrew, South Africa. Morocco. Correct. And time is up. <laughs> Round three running out quite fast. And the winner is Masi with 
three points and Andrew with one point, which means that Massive Massey yeah. is the with BBC Sport Africa armchair expert. Massive, come have a seat at the throne. Congratulations. And uh, great work from you. It has been quite a one-sided affair competition. Congratulations, Messi. Remember, you can get in touch with us about anything you've seen in the show via Facebook or Twitter. And if any of that doesn't feed your sports habit, well, that's fine. You can always check out the BBC Sport website. Thank you for joining us. I'm Janine Anthony. Until next time, goodbye, guys. <laughs>